Joining us now for more, Jessica Levinson, a professor at Loyola Law School. So, Jessica, we saw Rosenstein say that he didn't say these things. There are other reports suggesting that he might have, and it, he might have just been sarcastic about joking around about this. All this happened last year. Give us sort of the context behind those statements. Where do you see this all headed? Well, I see this all headed as more of a political scandal than a legal scandal. So these statements, as we said, were made last year when Rod Rosenstein recently had taken over the uh, investigation. He's acting attorney general because Jeff Sessions had to recuse himself from the investigation into whether or not there was any conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Russian government. You know, we were talking a little bit about this 25th Amendment. <coughs> Give us a sense here. <coughs> How exactly can the 25th Amendment be evoked? Not easily. So what you need is the vice president and you need a majority of the members of Congress to say that the president is unable to fulfill his duties, that he is unable to serve as president. If that sounds like it's a standard that is open to interpretation, that is exactly right. So again, what you need is the vice president who was chosen by the president of the United States and the cabinet which was chosen by the president of the United States to decide he can no longer serve as president. And even at that point, it still may be that the president can still serve because when the president, when the vice president and the majority of the cabinet make that decision, they transmit that decision in writing to the president of the Senate, Mitch McConnell and the speaker of the house, Paul Ryan. <clears throat> at that moment, then president Trump has the ability to say, no, I'm fit to serve. And then it goes to a vote of Congress and a majority of Congress has to decide whether or not the president is able to fulfill his duties. Mm. Could, now, if go ahead, Jessica. Sorry. So if Congress decides, yes, he's not able to fulfill his duties, we agree with the vice president and a majority of members of cabinet, the president can force a vote every 21 days. Can every 21 days force Congress to say he cannot fulfill his duties? He still cannot fulfill his duties. And again, we don't have a good definition for unable to serve as president. We don't have a good definition for what that means. Has it ever been invoked in the history of the United States? Do you recall any sort of incident? The 25th Amendment has been invoked, but not that provision. So we don't know how this would play out. We've had, you and I actually have had a lot of discussions about what provisions of the Constitution mean. We've had discussions about whether or not you can subpoena the president, whether or not the president can be indicted, what the emoluments clause means. We have conversations about the 25th Amendment now. There are so many areas of the Constitution and statutory issues that are largely untested. Mm -hmm. and, and now we're just looking at testing those. But no, this has not been invoked. Could the president use these allegations against Rosenstein? Uh, and, and what would happen at that point if he was removed from the Russia probe? Well, th that's a great question. So could he use this politically to say Rosenstein's against me and he can't serve and clearly he has a vendetta against me and the Department of Justice and the FBI cannot be trusted? Yes, he could. But firing Rod Rosenstein does not make the investigation into whether or not there's conspiracy between the Russian government and the Trump administration go away. One, you still have a number of indictments and guilty pleas that would stand. And two, the investigation can continue without Rod Rosenstein. This is not the Rosenstein investigation. It's the Robert Mueller investigation. And even if you then fired Robert Mueller, these are investigations that are conducted by agencies, not individual men. Mm -hmm. And so there's no indication that simply firing Rod Rosenstein would make all of this go away. The investigations will continue. I'm almost certain that there are still warrants outstanding, subpoenas outstanding. You cannot wave a magic wand, fire one person, and make the investigation disappear. You know, last night, Friday night on Fox News, Sean Hannity urged the president not to fire Rosenstein, calling it a trap. I want to play this for you. The president needs to know it is all a setup. He needs to know that regardless of whether he steps in or not, and I would argue he should definitely not, the deep state tonight is crumbling from within at this very hour. They're now turning against each other. It's the president's job and duty, of course, to remove all enemies from within. So what do you think it would mean? Could the president really be putting himself in some sort of legal, legal jeopardy if he got rid of the deputy AG? 
Well, the question as to the legal jeopardy specifically is, is he trying to obstruct justice by firing Rod Rosenstein? And that's very similar to the question that Rod Rosenstein is actually looking into, which is, is the fire, or I should say Rod Rosenstein asked Robert Mueller to look into, which is, is the firing of James Comey, does that in and of itself rise to the level of obstruction of justice. So if we see that the president decides to fire Rod Rosenstein in order to try to halt this investigation, and if we find that it satisfies the statute, that it's done with a corrupt intent, then the president could be looking at legal problems. Again, what does it mean for a president of the United States to face legal problems? We still have not decided whether or not the president could be indicted. Jessica Levinson, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.